ladies and gentlemen, Maz Mikkelsen! Yes, keep it going for Mads Mikkelsen. What an honor. So great to see you here. Manchester, hashtag Manchester loves Mads. Let's get that trending. Yes, they do. And I love Manchester. Yay. Yeah. United or City? All right, <laughs> I'm a, am I in trouble now? Well, Mads, you have had such an amazing turnout. Your fans have been uh, just keeping you so busy today here. Yep. How's the Comic-Con been for you so far? Hear it for the love of sci-fi. Uh, it's been amazing, as you said. I've, I've been super busy. Wonderful people, fans of many different things. But you can always count on being a lot of fanables being here. So uh, I appreciate that a lot, guys. Thanks for coming. Well, it's hard to ask questions to you because you just have such an illustrious career. I'm such a fan of you in so many different things. But I guess we'll start with the Star Wars universe because we have a lot of your, uh, your co-workers and other people in the Star Wars universe here in Manchester with you. Tell yep. us what it's like to be part of that, of that universe and that film franchise. Uh, it, it's cool. <laughs> uh, I was one of those uh, boys uh, when Star Wars came out in 78. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't see them. I was watching Bruce Lee. Uh, so I caught the train later and I watched all the films, uh, but I actually did it after I did the Rogue One myself. So uh, I was in trouble when we were shooting. I had no idea what anything was, <laughs> except for the Death Star. I knew about that one. Know the Death Star. Well, obviously, we want to ask you about the you know, the new iterations of Star Wars: The Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and of course, this would be very familiar to you, Andor. So, have you seen it, or if not, have you heard any good feedback? Uh, I've heard a lot about it, but I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? It's good. It's amazing. Do we love Andor or what? I've asked them three times yeah. today. It is. Yeah, phenomenal. I can't wait to see it. Uh, a couple of my friends are in it, so um, yeah, I can't wait to see it. It's going to yes. be great been so well received and we're so excited to see more of it. If you guys are just joining us for the first time here in Manchester, I'm going to ask a few questions. Then we have the lovely Caitlin standing by with the microphone so you can get your yep. questions as well. But again, you have can, had can, such can an amazing... Can you guys hear us? Can you hear us? All right. Woo! Good. Thank you. We've got dinosaurs over there. Yeah. Hey, dinos, can you hear us? He says yes. Yeah, he says yes. <laughs> but, but they got a really good hearing, dinosaurs. So. They do. Yes, and nobody move, right? He's saying yes. No? Yes, okay. <laughs> That's what we love here at Comic-Con, everyone having a bunch of fun. Well, also, I mean, not only the Star Wars universe, but Harry Potter. That entire genre is something that we all know and love, Harry Potter fans. Yes, so what was it like to play Grindelwald? Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was great to play Grindelwald, but it was obviously a very bumpy road uh, with the whole Johnny Depp story. Uh, the fans of Johnny Depp received me really, really nicely. I mean, uh, they were all heartbroken about what happened. Uh, so, but but uh, we, we tried to make a respectful change in the character, so it became my own, and uh, not copy what Johnny did, who I think is a fantastic actor. Sure. So we, we did our own thing, and um, I, I'm just... Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, I, I couldn't turn it down because my kids would, would kill me, you know, uh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I watched all the films with my kids, so um, yeah. 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 Do you have any favorite characters from the Harry Potter or Fantastic Beasts universe? Uh, I, uh, I like the Niffler from Fantastic <laughs> Beasts. I would like to have one of those, you know. Wouldn't it come in handy? If you, if you taught him to hand over everything he stole, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool side hustle, yeah. for sure. Niffler as a side hustle, we love it. Well, Miss Caitlin's going to get in the crowd here because I know you guys have been so patient, and some of the guests, of course, I was talking the ear off and fangirling, but we have so many questions for Mads, and there's one here in the front row. We've got one here on the right as well? Yeah. Okay, we've got one here on the right. Hi there, pretty lady. Hi, um, my name's Trin. Uh, this is crazy. Um, <laughs> so my question isn't really to do with film, but... Okay. I wonder if you got taken to karaoke right now yeah what is the first song that you would pick to sing like top of your lungs and why uh bad out of hell uh meatloaf um why i would do it because i love the song 
uh, I would obviously completely uh, destroy it. <laughs> uh, I, I grew up with Midloaf and it was part of my childhood and, and, and my youth. Uh, broke my heart when he died recently. Um, yeah, that, that album has always been a, a special place for me. Good answer. Did you get, ever get to meet Meatloaf before he passed? No, I never met him. Oh, he's been at Comic Cons for. He is a lovely, yes. lovely guy. Oh, right. Amazing legend. We have another question here uh, from this gentleman here on the right in the middle. Hello, Matt. Uh, Mark here. Uh, just to ask, you were also part of the James Bond franchise. Uh, do you prefer uh, any memories from the film? And also, do you prefer high budget films or low budget films? Uh, yeah, whether I prefer high budget or low budget films, I, I, I don't prefer either. I mean, they, they, they're kind of different worlds. Uh, if I do a smaller Danish film, uh, it, it tends to be a, a different kind of story, obviously. So, so we work a little different with the, with the characters, uh, whereas in a Bond film, it is quite set in stone. Uh, you know, you have to have a villain that can make Bond interesting. So, but I love both of them. I mean, it, it's both of the, 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 the budget films. It's acting, and, and I love acting. So if I, if I don't have to pick any of them, I, I will just uh, go back and forth and do one every year of, of uh, either of them. Uh, regarding uh, memory, well, I, I, I did love to, to beat the shit out of James Bond's balls. <laughs> it was a... It, it was a great day. It was a great day for all villains. <clears throat> I was this close to get him. On behalf of all villains, I was this close to get him. And it, it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Great day at the office, huh? I love that. Oh, Do you have any... you, I can't hear you, sorry. Oh, the bleeding of the eye. Yeah, I, oh. I, I cannot bleed from the eye. It was something we did. It was a trick. <laughs> <laughs> It's not your party trick, huh? No, it's not, not my your party, party trick. trick. Do you have any early memories of seeing Bond films when you were younger? Again, I was watching Bruce Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Bond was also a new world for me. I mean, I've watched everything since. Uh, obviously, we all knew the music, and I remember Jaws, and I remember certain things. But I, I, I was kind of hooked on other things as a kid. It was much more uh, Charles Bronson, as I said. It was that kind of uh, uh, Sergio Leone uh, yeah. was my world. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Put another question here in the front row, here on the left. Hi. Who was um, your favorite, oh no, who has been the character you've been playing that you liked the most and why? Which character I have played that I liked the most? most? Uh, I, I can't say I like this character, but I really enjoyed playing him. And it's a, it's a character called Svin, and it's from a Danish film called... Uh, Green Butchers, the Green Butchers. Yeah, some people have seen it. He's a very, very annoying character. Uh, somehow he is also very close to my heart. He was easy for me to play. <laughs> That's a great question. Caitlin's got another question. Where did she go, Miss Caitlin? There crazy. she is on the left. Hello. Hi, Mads. My name's Claire. Hi, Claire. Uh, you've, all, you've already mentioned the Green Butchers. I was going to mention that as one of my favorite films. Good. One of my other favourite films is The Hunt. I've seen it maybe four or five times. Yep. I think it is one of the best drama films I've ever seen. It's amazing. How did you prepare to be realised as a person that was accused of being a paedophile? Mm. Well, it's, it's, there's not a lot of preparation in that. Uh, in our film, it's not a mystery. He, He's innocent, we know that as an audience, uh, but he's being ostracized from the society completely. So it, it basically was for me just to hang in there as any normal person would be accused of that and then just see all the houses falling down around him, all the doors shutting in his face uh, uh, and just hang in there and see what that did to me and the character. Uh, but the script was so well written, so it was, it was uh, beautiful and easy, easy to lean into it, yeah. Great question, thank I, you. I promise this young man a question over here. Oh yes, we will make sure we get to you next, sir. We'll come but, to you in a sec. Yes, but Caitlin's got another question right over here on the left, this lovely lady in red. Hi, my name is Shay. Uh, first of all, uh, we know the Fanables can also always count on you, so thank you. Uh, second of all, 
a lot of us noticed in the photo ops um, that your hair looks a little bit blue. Yeah, it's a little blue. Did yep. you dye it? What's, what's going on with that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know actually. They, I have a hunch. I just did a, I did a Danish film uh, where I play a man who's 45. And then the film jumps in time and then he's, he's my age. And my own hair is, is fairly gray. So they dyed it a little darker for, for most of the film. And then they dyed it back to gray and something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, uh, so after washing it a few times, it just turned blue. Uh, so I'm stuck with that. I'm not a social justice warrior. <laughs> I just have blue hair for a couple of days. Give it up for Mads being a trendsetter when it comes to blue hair. Here you go. We love it. This gentleman has a question yeah. for you. Thank you very much. Uh, I was just going to ask about how you calibrate between heroes and villains because mm. sometimes villains don't always think that they are villains. So how do you approach making villains feel very sympathetic? For instance, in Grindelwald, he's, he has a very vulnerable side to him as well. Yeah. Uh, 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 and so I was just uh, interested in that calibration between the two. And yeah. also, also, I can't wait for Indiana Jones. I'm very excited. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it's a very good question. I, I agree. Uh, most actors, when they play the villain, are trying to find something, if not likable, at least something that makes sense in what their mission is. Uh, obviously, we have seen many villains in the world that was just taking over the world. But it's been, it's, it's been um, loosened up a little uh, for the last few decades, meaning that, that if you watch a film today, you, you probably can go, he has a point, or she has a point. There's something about it that's right. The means of getting to a more, a more beautiful world uh, is where the, it differs from the hero, obvious, right? Uh, but yes, I, I don't think a lot of people, as we historically uh, look at them today, uh, we know who are villains. I don't think anyone sat out saying, I want to be the baddie today. Everybody had a mission of making the world a better place. But how to get there is the tricky thing, and that's what makes a villain. You're Thank welcome. Thank you. Great question. Great answer, of course, as well. We have uh, some lovely ladies in the front row that have a question for you. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Uh, I want to ask a question about Hannibal. Uh, we all know that Will is in deep love with Hannibal in the show. Um, <laughs> But sometimes Will seems to act a bit of, uh, 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 kind of indifferent to Hannibal. Uh, so in the last episode of uh, season three, when Hannibal and Will fall off the cliff together, uh, I wonder uh, if Hannibal has understood Will's deep love to him at that moment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, it, it, it is. It is hard not to say it's a love story. It's, it's a metaphysical love story in many ways. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to see it more physical, uh, but it's definitely a bromance. It's, it's a little, it's a yin and yang story. Two people who somehow have found a soulmate in the other. It, they both know it will kill them, but they can't stay away from each other. And by the way, I think that yes, uh, Will pulls Hannibal over the cliff, but Hannibal knows he's doing it. Right. Wonderful. Got it. Yes, great question. Thank you so much. Oh, there's a question oh, again, this lovely lady as well. Thank you. Oh. Hi, Mass. Uh, I also have a question on Hannibal. Um, do you think uh, Will and Hannibal will adopt another child in their life of rapers? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> uh, we don't know where, Han where Abigail is at this point, do we? <laughs> I mean, uh, Brian Fuller's universe, anything can happen. I would like to see Abigail back again if that was the case. But um, there's always Bedelia somewhere in the world. Somebody has to take care of her. 
<laughs> I love his enthusiasm, by the way. He's been great this whole day. We have a question right here on the right. Um, hello, Matt. My name's Annalise. Um, I was wondering, um, when you uh, auctioned as Hannibal, how did you feel? Because um, have you ever met Anthony Hopkins? I've, met, I've never met Anthony Hopkins. I've been on a Skype meeting with him uh, for a different film that, that never, uh, never became. Um, and he just comes across as a fantastic, wonderful person. Uh, obviously, like everybody else in here, I think he's an amazing actor and what he did as Hannibal Lecter is unbeatable. Um, so another good reason not to try to copy him. <laughs> uh, so I felt obviously intimidated by the whole situation because I've seen it to perfection before. Uh, but again, ours is a TV show, a very different animal. I believe that Anthony had 14 minutes of screen time in Silence of the Lamp. I have 10 hours. Uh, so it's a very different way of building a character. Um, and and uh, he's, of course he was an inspiration, but we could not copy it. It's a question right here on the right. Uh, hi, Maz. Here. <laughs> um, uh, quite similar to the previous question, I wonder which character did you find the most challenging to play? Thank you. Uh, it, it, it probably would be Hannibal Lecter. Uh, he was challenging in, in many ways. Um, Hannibal could do anything the writer found interesting because Hannibal will always behave however, whatever, at any given time to get what he wants. He, in that sense, he's a chameleon, right? So that was a tricky thing. Then there was the whole language thing. Then there was like, it was very, very elaborated scripts. Uh, I was speaking Hungarian, Japanese, uh, Italian, and, and the scripts came in very, very late. And I spoke about things. I've, I didn't know anything about art, music, food, uh, astrophysics. Uh, so there was a lot to learn. Uh, so it was very challenging, but I, but I, I really loved it. Yep. Yes, thank you. I've got a question in the back on the right there. Lovely lady in white. Hello. Um, I think I speak for everyone to say thank you so much for coming today. Uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so you obviously do a lot of English-speaking roles. Um, when they're premiered in Denmark, are they dubbed? And do you do your own dubbing? Because that would be really good, because you get like twice the credit. Yeah, we, uh, we don't dub things in Denmark. There are a few countries in Europe that does not dub things. One of them is obviously England, Denmark, Sweden, Sweden and Norway, and Holland do not dub. Uh, when you go to Germany, it's a different thing, or France, or Spain, they will dub their things. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm not dubbed, it's uh, whatever, if there's an Italian film, it's in Italian, yeah. Wow. That's a cool question. We've got another question from the gentleman on the right. Got to stop meeting like this. <laughs> um, so, Maz, out of all the characters that you played, it's, you played a lot of villains, a lot of heroes. Have you ever learned anything from these characters? No. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a tricky question. I learn, every time I work, I learn something. Obviously, uh, there are things I learned through Hannibal Lecter, uh, things I had never touched upon before, and I had to dive into that world. Uh, but in terms of learning, like, anything human, I have a, I have a hunch that we as actors have to be a little smarter than our characters, always. That doesn't mean that, uh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't be smarter than, than uh, uh, Einstein, obviously, if I played him, but I might have to be smarter on a different level. If I give life to him, I have to find his weaknesses and his strengths. I have to understand them so I, as an actor, can manipulate when it comes out. Uh, and, and often very smart people are not aware of their own weaknesses. Uh, so we learn Every day, every day we work, but from a single character, not really, no. Brilliant answer. We've got a question here on the left, all the way in the back. Uh, first of all, I've got to take this opportunity to say that my friends Farida and Ida would kill me if I didn't tell you that they think that you are fine. <laughs> like a fine-looking man. 
Uh, my question Thanks. is, though, um, how did it come about and what was it like working with Rihanna in Bitch Better Have My Money? Uh, I got a phone call uh, and my agent said, do you want to be in a, a music video with, with Rihanna? And I, I kind of knew who she was. I had a hunch. Then I double checked with my son and uh, just like your friends, he would have killed me if I turned it down. Uh, so uh, she must have seen me do something and she wanted me to be part of that music video and it was uh, two days of absolute insanity, complete chaos. She was, she was really lovely, very, very sweet. Uh, and I think, she, she, and I think she's a fantastic musician, so I, I'm very proud of being part of it. Yeah. Awesome question. Yes, round, give a round of applause for that question. That was awesome. Love, Rihanna. We've got a question all the way here in the back on the left-hand side. Hello there, Mads. This isn't really a question as such, but I just want to say a huge fan and I do believe you're going to win an Academy Award in the next 10 years. I just want this recorded. So whenever you win the Academy Award, I just want this played back on social media and uh, I want everybody to tell me that I was right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you half of it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Another question here on the left. Hi, um, hi. Uh, I'm, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm Molly, that's Flossie. Um, I just have a question, like, what's your favorite Harry Potter movie? My favorite ha Harry Potter film? Yeah. I'd, well, I'm probably going to fuck up the names here, but uh, I think the first couple, the first two films, uh, there was a, an amazing innocence in the films, uh, and the magic was new, uh, and, and you can argue, obviously, the films probably got better and better, and maybe they got more and more used to being actors as well. But there was such an innocence in the, in the first two films that, that it, was, um, it felt like, as we say, butterfly dust. Uh, and and then that, that made them priceless, I would say. Yeah. Thank you. Another question all the way in the back on the left-hand side. Hi, Mads. I just wanted to say, what, which character did you hate playing? <laughs> I never hated playing any character. I, I, I enjoyed, I mean, obviously, if you're in the middle of something that really sucks, that is so bad that it doesn't work, then you kind of hate it, right? Uh, luckily, I haven't done too much of that. Maybe when I was younger and did theater, I, I've, I've done a couple of theater plays that I was like, I couldn't wait to get home. <laughs> uh, but um, when it comes to films, there's nothing I regret and nothing I hated. Another question, yeah, woohoo! Another question here in the back on the left. Hi, Mads. Um, just wondering, what was your experience uh, playing Caecilius on Doctor Strange? Um, well, I was in a, in a Marvel film that's, that's top of the list of, of all of us, especially kids like me who grew up with the Marvel Universe in comic books before they actually realized them on films. And that specific Doctor Strange I knew about. It was not super well known to a broader audience, but I remember it, and I remember it was um, on acid. <laughs> you know, uh, I couldn't put a finger on it, but it was very different than anything else that you were reading at that time. Uh, and seeing the final result, how they actually captured that 60 atmosphere, 69, 68, uh, I thought it was amazing that they still made it to a broad audience, but they still captured the essence on how freakish that comic book actually was. Another question here on the left, all the way on the left here. Uh, if you were to change the ending of Hannibal, like what would your ideal ending of it be? I, I guess I would have to eat him, right? <laughs> Are you not agreeing? <laughs> they do. I mean, if you, if you truly love someone, you want to consume them, right? <laughs> On that note, I don't know where to go. <laughs> but don't, don't get any ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> what a quote from Matt Mickelson. <laughs> yeah, I don't want a lawsuit. I, I didn't mean it. For people in here who love each other, don't eat each other. Yeah. Just, uh, it's a good, dis yeah, dis good disclaimer, good save, Mads. We've got a question again here on the left. Hi. Um, Hi. <laughs> I 
was just wondering, of all the shows or movies that you've been in, what was the best behind the scenes atmosphere like? Uh, oh, it's hard for me. That's a tricky question. I can't remember at the point. I mean, the, the, the latest thing you've just done is what is closest to you at the moment, so I remember that vividly, right? Uh, there's been tons of things. Things I've done with old friends, and there's a, obviously an atmosphere there. Um, uh, oh, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously I have to go back to Hannibal again because we spent so much time together. We were, we were together for three years. It became a, a, a real uh, family, all the, all the actors, the entire crew, everybody behind the film or the, or the show. Uh, that, there was just a special atmosphere there. It was. Quick question for me about actors. Is there anybody here at this particular Comic Con at For the Love of Sci-Fi that you either were reunited with or that you were excited to meet? Or I, ha I haven't met anyone yet. Really? And I was trying to get somebody to tell me who was here. Yep. <laughs> yes, uh, actually, uh, Dolph is coming tomorrow. Yeah, it's very yes. exciting. And I met him twice, and he's a wonderful person, so I'm very excited to meet him. Wonderful. Fantastic. We have another question. Where did she go? She's very good at hiding. There we go, on the left. I'm amazing at hiding. <laughs> you are. Hi, birds. I love you, by the way. Um, so I've been playing Death Stranding, which has been really awesome. And um, I was wondering, um, did you really enjoy doing motion capture acting, and will you do it again? It was weird, to be <laughs> honest. I mean, it's, we're, we're, I don't know, we're dressed up like uh, Smurfs, you know, uh, and we have a camera here. So it, it reminds us of acting, but there's so many restrictions in it. But it was also funny because I wasn't the only one who was dressed up like that. Uh, I mean, Norman Reedus was looking like an idiot as well. So, so we, we didn't feel alone. Um, but I did enjoy it because Hideo Koshima uh, made it feel as if it was the most natural thing in the world we were doing. And every time we did something wrong or we forgot a line, he would always say, it's okay, I can fix it later. He, he could fix everything in his world. And that was, that was a wonderful atmosphere. Got a question here in the middle towards the left a little bit. There we go. Thank you. Um, hi, Mads. I'm Yulu, and I love you so much. Um, my question is, is there a specific genre or a type of character that you really want to work in the future? I've, I've said it a few times. I've, I've always been a big fan of, of zombies. Um, I love zombie films. I love Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> And there's so many characters in there that are interesting, but my problem would be that I would like to be a zombie. And, uh, and they tend to die really fast, you know. So we have to find a, a, a main character as a zombie, and then, I'll, uh, then I might consider it. Kung Fu films, I was a fan of. Uh, we have to hurry for me to do it now, I'm 57. Uh, I might be able to pull one off. Uh, and straightforward horror film, I mean, obviously, you can, you can argue that Hannibal is a horror show, but it's more than that, much more than that. So, like, straightforward horror film, I've always been a fan of as well, and I would love to be in one. Yeah. Are there any actors that you haven't worked with that you would like to work with in oh, the future? Oh, there's too many to mention. Too there's, many, huh? There's a billion. I mean, every, everything I grew up with, most of them are 70s, in their almost 80 today and I would love to go back and work with some of them. There's plenty much younger actors than me that I would love to work with. And I, I'm, I'm lucky, I'm getting the chance at least back home to work with a lot of young people who are, who are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. With a question here on the right in, yeah, right there. Hi, Mads, uh, my name's Jamie. I also love you, but you know. Uh, <laughs> I studied English literature, so I was wondering if uh, there's been any books recently that you particularly liked reading or Say it again. Did you study what? Sorry. English literature. So literature. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, I. Doesn't have to be like a modern classic. No. I can just read that. No, but I mean, I remember one of the first things I did read in English. Uh, I, I I read Lord of the Rings when I was quite young, in Danish, and then I because I I had a fairly big vocabulary in English because for one reason we, 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 we don't dub film so I watched everything in English and my brother had uh, bought all the all the old vinyls of Monty Python sketches so we, we knew Monty Python uh, inside out so I knew a ton of words I had no idea what they meant but I could say them uh, 
So I, uh, so I read uh, Lord of the Rings um, uh, when I was probably 13 years old in English. It was very difficult, but I've read them in Danish, so I could guess a lot. And it was, it's one of my favorite books. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to tell you that our next question, this lovely lady also has blue hair. Mads, look, right back there. Yeah, she is a blue You're hair. You're such baby. a trendsetter, I told I you. Am. Um, hi. I went fast. Uh, just wanted to say, I, um, I love you. And Thank you. I grew up with Hannibal and Sansa of Lambs and everything. So when they brought up the series, I was immensely happy because it was being carried on. But, um, okay. <laughs> uh, but no, I want to go, um, we've gone about Hannibal and um, James Bond and all the um, other movies we've mentioned, but... Um, I want to ask, because uh, one of my somewhat favourite movies of yours is Polar, and not for most, <laughs> but mostly for the, um, the assassin part of it, and all the gore and things like that, but I want to ask, um, how did you fare with the movie in general, and um, the stunts and whatnot you had to do for it, because you had to kill a dozen people in one whole hall, while you were covered in blood and snipped yeah. death. <laughs> it, it was a very brutal film to make because the stunts are very brutal. They are very in-your-face stunts. I, I mean, I got so many injuries doing that film. Uh, I, I'm barefeeted. Uh, it's minus five degrees, and we shoot for four days in a basement, and everybody steps on my toes, and and it's concrete, right? So yeah, I got a ton of injuries, but I. I I liked the energy of all the stunts and all the sequences we were doing. We were all agreeing on that's what we wanted. We didn't want it to be CGI. We wanted it to be brutal in face value, right? Um, that, that, I'm, I really like the film. And there, there are certain things I, would have, I think we should have done different. But the, but the energy of the film, I, I, I completely, I, I'm, I'm in love with. We've got a question all the way in the back on the right. She's waving her hand there. Thank you. Hey Mads, you're right, mate. I wanted to ask about the film Arctic. That film was incredible. Oh, thanks. Wow, your performance is stellar. Thanks. Also, Hannibal season four, any updates? I have to ask, no one else has asked. Yeah, nobody's asked. No one has asked? Uh, there, there are no updates. I mean, Brian is talking about it still, and, and it's all about finding a home for it. Uh, we were as surprised as everybody else because the numbers were actually climbing uh, and, and all of a sudden they shut it down. So, um, and it was a little unfair because we had a, a brilliant idea to the fourth season. So hopefully, hopefully one day. I mean, it can easily be picked up 10 years later. It's, it's that kind of story. Um, so yeah, Arctic was a special uh, small, low budget film that we shot quite fast in Iceland. Uh, at, by far the most brutal film I've been part of uh, when it comes to shooting. Um, they, they didn't have a lot of, um, of connections in the movie with all these guys. It was a film, I think, sh that should have traveled much more, gone to festivals, been seen by a lot of people. Um, and it didn't happen, but it's out there, and, and I think it's a little pearl, it's a little uh, fine diamond. I love that film. Yep. Yes. We've got another question all the way in the back on the right here. She's waving at us. Hiya. Hi. Um, what does your wife think of you being labelled sexy man? Yes. For want of a better way of putting it. Because she sees you in a way that nobody else does. And when your, people are seeing your picture and they're going, oh my God. Is she, does she look at you and go like, get in the bin. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I haven't asked her. Uh, I, I guess um, there, it's a few years ago, to be frank. <laughs> there, there was a Danish magazine that voted me sexiest man maybe 20 years ago. And that was pretty fun. It was fun to have on your CV. But I also had a friend who got nominated next year. And he, he went, and I think my wife has the same attitude as his wife because he made the big mistake of coming home and telling his wife, do you know who you're looking at? And she said, and she said what do you mean? You're looking at the sexiest man in Denmark. And then, then she said, yeah, but you're looking at the most tired woman in Denmark. <laughs> and she went to sleep. So I think my, my wife has the same attitude to that. Yeah. That's fair. We have time for one final question. It's going to be right here on the right, all the way in the back here. Thank you. Mads, you're very cool. Just going to throw out that there. 
So straight up, who's your favourite Hannibal? You're not allowed to pick yourself. Uh, it's got to be Anthony. I mean, yeah, more of a Brian Cox. Myself. Yeah, I, I love what he did. <laughs> um, and but there is. They're, they're two very different films, right? Uh, what they did, and, and um, yeah, Brian Cox is also amazing. But there's something legendary about what Anthony did. And uh, again, 14 minutes of screen time, and we can barely remember anything else but him. And that, that's an amazing job. Yeah. Great question. Everyone had great questions. Thank you so much, everybody. So sorry we're running out of time here. This, I knew this would fly by because I'm such a fan of your work. But uh, before we leave you to go get some more autographs and photos, also Mads will be here tomorrow as well for day two of For the Love of Sci-Fi. But anything that you're looking forward to you can tell us about after you leave Manchester, any upcoming projects or just getting ready for the holidays? Well, I'm, I'm just looking forward to 7 o'clock when uh, Argentina and Messi is playing football. Yes! I, um, I, I take it small steps at a time. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you are such a legend. Thank you for being here. Thank you, guys. As Thank I said, one of the greatest actors of our time, Mads Mikkelsen. Give it up for him. Thank you so much. Keep it going for Mads Mikkelsen.